your hands to Jesus and bless his name tonight. Lift your hands high above your head and worship his majesty. Father, we bless you. We bless you for your mercy. We bless you for your presence. Someone giving God thanks tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the doer of wonders, the lifter of men. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, the one who glorifies Jesus in the midst of his people. Thank you for your presence, your power, your glory, your wisdom. Now ask him for an encounter tonight. Father, give me an encounter again by your word, by your spirit. Give me a very definite encounter tonight. Give me an encounter by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. One more time. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Father, we pray that you will change us, you will build us. Let the revelation of your word come with power. And in the name of Jesus, may we ascend realms and dimensions in the spirit tonight. Empower us even by your spirit. Tonight, on account of your word and on account of your spirit, let weeping come to an end. Let pain come to an end. Let failure come to an end. Let negative seasons come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Like you to welcome someone by your left and right. And then please be gloriously seated. God bless you. Good evening everybody. Help me appreciate in our midst tonight, Reverend Akila, House on the Rock, Joss. Thank you, sir. We honor you. We appreciate you so greatly. Thank you. I welcome you again in the name of Jesus Christ for all who are connecting by way of internet. The Lord will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I... I thought very deeply about the service um, while I was away ministering and it just occurred to me again and it came with a renewed passion how that it is very important that God's people be enlightened. These, the times that we live in are not times when you should entertain ignorance. Hallelujah spiritual ignorance especially as we approach the close of the age will mean defeat are we together spiritual ignorance will mean that an individual may never be able to represent the purposes of god in his life 
so now is not the time to entertain ignorance whatsoever we must be ever open and ever ready to access light light that grants us grace to be in command light that grants us grace to reveal jesus hallelujah and this as you have learned again and again in this place is the assignment of a teaching priest in fact let me tell you this let me let me describe for you the jurisdiction of my commitment to you as far as the ministry of the word is concerned number one my first assignment to you and over you by god is to create an atmosphere that sponsors supernatural encounters please do not forget this my first assignment is not to teach the word my first assignment is to labor with the spirit and ensure and insist that the atmosphere remains ever conducive for encounters encounters with the spirit of god because there are some things teachings can will not do it will take a direct encounter with the spirit of the living god so the atmosphere of worship the atmosphere of prayer all of these is to be able to make the atmosphere the spiritual climate conducive for encounters number two enlightenment my second assignment over you by god is to be able to grant us access to high level spiritual illumination please i want you to listen carefully hallelujah so that you comprehend the ways of god you comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom because in your enlightenment is the manifestation of your authority in the spirit authority in the spirit is light dependent john 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not that means for as long as you are in darkness there are some things that will not be possibilities in your life hallelujah the bible says in ephesians 4 18 that when we are in darkness and our minds are blind we are alienated from the life of god and that through the ignorance that is in our hearts so line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little doctrine after doctrine truth after truth teaching after teaching i owe you by god and based on the covenant of my call and my service to see that as much as god grants grace it is delivered to you with accuracy exactitude and precision the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god means that your growth will not be lopsided as a result of prejudices and biases that you will be holistically built I will teach prosperity like there's no other topic to teach i will teach character like there's no other topic to teach i will teach the ministry of the spirit like there's no other topic to teach i will teach on influence like there's no other topic to teach i have no particular biases to any area of the of the kingdom life at all provided it is scriptural and it makes for the holistic development of the saints when i teach it i will teach it with passion that is the assignment of a teaching priest are we together so that in addition to your godliness in addition to character you are able to find a life of meaning and purpose to represent Jesus holistically the third assignment that I have over you is the assignment of empowerment in partnership with the Holy Spirit I owe you to supply you by the spirit all of the spiritual resources that make for your strengthening and your overall empowerment the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it says your strength is small empowerment spirit soul and body mental empowerment that comes by providing superior ideas spiritual empowerment building capacity that's why we took our time to pray and fast it doesn't have to be a special occasion or a special request it is part of the spiritual growth process of any serious believer hallelujah and then of course 
I owe you support, any and all kinds of support, to be able to guide your steps, your walk with God, to see to it that your Christian experience is not without help and is not without support. And finally, I believe that I owe you purpose to be able to connect all your training and your dealings and to help you find your place in life and destiny. Let me tell you, my assignment is not complete over you. If the only thing you keep learning is just mystery after mystery with no point of application, there must be a connection between what you are learning and where you should use it. Hallelujah. Purpose is what gives value to pursuit. Every time you seek his power, you seek his face, his glory to know his ways, it is to an end. There has to be purpose connected to this. Prosperity without purpose becomes a burden. Revelation without purpose becomes a burden. And if I may add one more responsibility, I owe you mastery and efficiency. I owe it to you that you not only come into a comprehension of the truth, but that you come to a point of mastery and efficiency. He says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. Hallelujah. And for as long as God grants me strength, you can be sure that I remain ever committed to seeing that these various dimensions are supplied for adequately. Hallelujah. But you also owe yourself an assignment. There is a participatory role that you have to play. Your first, your first assignment is genuine connection and submission to learn. Your first assignment is not writing. Your first assignment is not receiving. Your first assignment is not shouting amen. Your first assignment is not falling. Your first assignment is not even testified. Your first assignment is a commitment from the depth of your heart that for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of those connected to me, for the sake of the mandate upon me to reveal Jesus, I submit myself to learning. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Acts 2, 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly with resilience, with endurance. That means that continuation was not convenient, but it was a covenant. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. Hallelujah. So you owe it to submit yourself to learn number two. You owe it to apply the truths that you learn. You must obtain grace. There is no teaching that happens here that we just wrap up by the last point. We say, okay, with these few points of mine, I hope that you now understand. God bless you. See you next week. We always end every meeting with prayer. And among the many things we seek to do is to obtain grace. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. You need the engracing of the Spirit because it is not by might nor by power. The Bible says it is by my Spirit. Paul said, I know what to do, but to do it I do not have that ability. He says, with my spirit, I serve the Lord, but in the flesh, I see another law walking in my members. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So you can know what to do, but the engracing to do it may not be there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And may tonight be one of such nights where you get to learn the precepts of the spirit again with power, and with wisdom you are equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit by the way let me ask you how many of you can truly testify that your life is changing I'm not talking of this church thing that you say just so that you don't annoy a man of God if, if you are not changing listen the problem is not what you are hearing the problem is you that's why I'm confident enough I know the power of what is coming to you are we together if you are not changing, there are many reasons. One, you are not born again, possibly. 
two you are not engaging the truths that you are learning or three you are not even connected sincerely you can come here like a football fan coming to watch um a, a spiritual match and you are happy entertain yourself coming to see faces and share the grace and go back or you can come here carnally minded desiring something else other than jesus let me tell you sincerely the recipe for frustration is that your eyes is in any other thing other than jesus i give you a guarantee sooner or later you will be frustrated the longevity factor in the house of god is as you stay gazing on jesus if you look for trouble you will find it if you look for inefficiency you will find it if you look for mundane carnal things it will distract you unfortunately so you must set your eyes on jesus lord i am here for you i am here for your presence i am here for an encounter hallelujah speak to us in the name of jesus christ help us oh god to rise and to stand strong i want you to pay attention to what you will learn tonight because i believe that this is a much needed revelation especially for the times that we live in i woke up a few i think a week or two ago and just to look through online papers and i saw that they were showing the picture of a little baby and it's purported that she's the eighth billion eight billionth baby on earth and it didn't excite me because you see i've read my bible and i interpret life from the lens of scripture go and read the bible and find out what happens every time men begin to multiply from the book of genesis every time men begin to multiply greed begins to multiply self-centeredness begins to multiply the fight for resource control begins to multiply are we together yes so with increase comes the burden of maintenance that means that there are things that if you do not know i i hate to be the bearer of bad news but based on intelligence and based on scripture we are about to see the greed of man stretch to borders we have never seen in modern history. We are about to see people act like beasts in selfishness and wickedness like we have never seen. That means people will easily fraternize with the realm of the spirit to, if possible, clear everybody out of the way and make sure they have access to this. Praise God. I have a little beautiful aquarium and they put all kinds of fish all kinds of fishes there and one time I found out the tiniest of them just disappeared I didn't see them again and then I said something must be going on here I mean these guys have coexisted in peace what would have happened I found out that the larger the larger fishes will cluster around an area and seem to eat and then go back and I couldn't find the tiny the tiniest you know the very small ones again and I got sad and I said I hope it is not what I am thinking I hope because I travel <laughs> I traveled for a while so when I came back I didn't find two and I said what in the world is this for me, it just gave me a very powerful... I said, how could this fish be living together in peace? Eating together, celebrating together, and just a few extra days beyond their normal schedule of food. And you come back and you don't find the two smallest ones. They are gone. What was in the mind of the larger fish as they ate the smaller ones? They said, look, I love you. I, you need to know that we are, we are together. We're together in this, and um, it's not that I really want to destroy you, but that is just what happens with increase. Now, as funny as this sounds, it is not a joke. Are we together? Yeah, because that is exactly what happens. The moment you have an increase in the population of men, and then you have wars across territories, that means there is limited resource are we together 
we have all kinds of things happening climatic conditions that are you know destroying productivity it is important for us to wake up otherwise we will be taken by surprise the extent of wickedness and greed that we see in our world right now just because you are born again and you love God make no mistakes about it not everybody is born again just because your conscience has not been seared with iron and you can still be empathetic towards people you will be mistaken to believe that everyone is like that there are people who will kill without thinking twice even if you are their relative there are people who will if people can sell their soul to the devil is it you they cannot sell hallelujah that means we need to hold on we need to lay hold to all the forces that guarantee our victory even at such times hallelujah by reason of what i do usually when people are kidnapped or something happens you know people would easily reach me and say apostle pray and i am amazed you cannot believe the stories that i've heard through the years brothers and sisters kidnapping themselves arranging are we together husbands and wives arranging evil look the heart of man ba, is desperately wicked and rather than flattering yourself that everybody likes you and evil will not come near your corridor let me advise you in advance that you wake up and find the forces that secure you in the name of Jesus may the Lord open your eyes and your ears Amen. are you ready for tonight I shall not die I want to share with you a very deep mystery the mysteries that control longevity and to show you a secret that can grant you dominion over the spirit of death please listen to this message for your sake for the sake of those that God has brought under your covering Psalm 91 and verse 16 thank you Jesus Psalm 91 verse 16 let's read it together if this is your testimony ready one to read with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation one more time with long life will I satisfy him and show him Exodus chapter 23 please verse 26 Exodus 23 26 let's read this one and then I begin to teach ready one to read there shall nothing cast high young nor be buried in the land the number of your days I will fulfill shout a loud amen, amen. by this scripture already let me speak over your life if there is any plot of darkness to end and waste your life and your destiny or your children or your husband or your wife or your family members in the name of Jesus the resurrected Christ I declare that that plot comes to an end now like Haman whoever digs a pit programming that you or your loved ones will fall into it in death in the name of Jesus the diggers of those pit will fall into it please sit down major thoughts as far as longevity is concerned number one please write it down the first thing I want you to know tonight ladies and gentlemen people of God is that God's desire and God's plan for the saints in Christ and for men is to live our lives on earth to its fullest God's plan God's ultimate plan and ultimate desire for you and for me is that we live our lives here on earth to its fullest that means it is not the plan of God that our lives be cut short it is not the plan of God that we do not finish our cause point number one it is God's desire 
and it is God's plan for us in Christ especially that we live our lives and we fulfill our days to its fullest Psalm 139 and verse 16 please give us new international version if we can find that 139 verse 16 Psalm 139 everyone please read it says it says your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me someone say ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be that means it was not just the idea of my parents the bible says that when you showed up before you showed up there were days that were ordained for you now whether you will fulfill those days or not is a separate issue but you know for a fact based on the authority of scripture that there are days that have been ordained and have been earmarked for you if you believe that say amen. amen so it is God's desire that we live our lives to the fullest John 10 10 Jesus was speaking and he said the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy notice he never said to steal or to kill or to destroy he wants to do all in addition to stealing he wants to kill in addition to killing he wants to destroy he says but i am come that ye might have life help me please and that you will have it more abundantly point number two so we have established first and foremost that it is god's idea and that it is consistent with the will of god that men and especially the saints in light fulfill their days point number two the Bible clearly reveals to us that it is possible for an individual to die before his or her time having established the fact that it is the will of God for us to fulfill our days the Bible is also not silent as to the possibility of people dying before their time in fact the Bible also tells us that days and years can be added, days and years can be subtracted. Is someone learning? So the Bible tells us that we can die before our time if we do not engage the keys that guarantee long life. Ecclesiastes 7.17 Ecclesiastes 7 17 it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish he said why shouldest thou die before thy time a man can die before his time I forbid that from happening to you in the name of Jesus Christ Psalm 55 and verse 23 The Bible says, but thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. He says, but I will trust in you. That means the psalmist is praying. He said, Lord, cut their lives into half so that I can find peace. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 13 verse 33 Deuteronomy 5 33 he said ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God had commanded you that ye may live and that it may be well with you and that ye may prolong your days is that in your Bible prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess so it is possible for a man's life to be prolonged and it is possible for a man's life to be cut short in deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 please pay attention it says now these are the commandments the statutes the judgments which the lord your god commanded to teach you 
that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Verse 2. It says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of your life. To what end? That thy days may be prolonged. So God is able to prolong days and days can be cut short. But generally, it is important for you to know that just because God has ordained a predefined period and moment for you, it does not mean you will fulfill it. This is the second fact that I want you to know. Number three, the Bible clearly reveals that in most cases, the Bible clearly reveals that in most cases, God is not behind the untimely death, especially of the saints. Write it down, please. The Bible reveals that in most cases, underline the word most cases, God is not behind. God is not behind the saints dying before their time. Isaiah 65 and verse 20. Isaiah 65 and verse 20, please. It says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And so he said there will be no infant of days. In Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 32. Ezekiel 18 and verse 32. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. Wherefore turn yourselves to me and leave. That means as far as I am concerned, I am a giver of life and the sustainer of the same. It is not my will, it is not my intent that people are cut short before their time. Now, notice I said in most cases. You will be surprised that I did not say in all cases. Because as you walk with God, you will find out that there are many things that happen on earth. Are we together? There are conditions in a man's life where death it is not it's not a, a disadvantage Jesus himself said it is more expedient that I go that means there are conditions where it becomes more expedient than an in, that an individual goes in one of such cases is when you become the friend of God there is an implication to being the friend of God when you are the friend of God it means you are never allowed to partake of perdition and if as a friend of God something will happen to you based on your decisions and it will cut you away from God he will take you himself so that you are spared let the body be corrupted but that your soul be preserved it is true while it is true listen carefully that God is a God of longevity there are many conditions upon which God works with the saints, especially people who have made very deep spiritual investments as far as his program is concerned. If anything, is it not in your Bible, Jesus said, all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost. That means they can be lost. If Jesus said none is lost, he's saying there is a possibility. It was my power that kept them so that none is lost except the son of perdition and that happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So in most cases, God is not behind the departure of the saints before their time. Jesus clearly showed that he is not, he is not the author of taking people before their time ordinarily. There are three resurrection miracles in the Bible 
that validates that number one was in john chapter 11 resurrecting lazarus question what exactly did lazarus do that contributed to the cross that jesus had to resurrect him because we do not see lazarus necessarily playing any role so why did jesus have to go and resurrect lazarus the bible says oh how he loved him and he went to the tomb he resurrected lazarus i hope you know that everyone who came back from the dead later died so it was not that jesus did not want them to die it was that it was not their time there was a message that that resurrection was bringing he resurrected lazarus number two remember jarius's daughter jarius's daughter you find that i think in luke chapter 7 beginning from verse 11 downwards the bible talks about jarius who lost his daughter she was 12 years old and he went in and said thalita kumi little girl i say unto you arise and she arose and said please give her food jesus himself the bible took out time to tell us her age and said 12 years is too small and jesus came to resurrect the lady as proof that he wants he desires it is consistent with god's will now please let me pause here and just make a statement i know that everyone here including the person talking you may have lost someone at one point in your life close to you deeply close to you or maybe a distant friend or a relative you see in dealing with the matters of the kingdom you must sustain the maturity to number one sympathize with the reality on ground but you must grow in revelation to stand absolute on the truth of God's word with no biases and no prejudices are we together I'm saying this so that on one hand, while I deeply and will always sympathize with all those who have lost loved ones, perhaps there are people who came here and you got a sad news even before coming here. Teaching something like this can be very uncomfortable. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with the truth, the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Are we together? So you must perceive what I am teaching from the lens of love and the desire to bring the saints to a higher level of perfection. For those who have had loved ones transit, if they are in Christ, find rest. Are we together? Find rest. Sadly and unfortunately for those who died without Christ, there is no need crying and regretting over their transition. Now we are mandated, we who are alive, are we together? The greatest consolation for that pain of losing a loved one without Christ is to make up your mind. There are people who get sick, unfortunately, and inflicted with viruses and diseases, and they will tell themselves, I will not die alone. Have you heard of such kind of things? And then they will say, I must give it to as many people. That means there is somebody who can say, because I lost one person without Christ, I must bring 10,000 souls, a million souls to Jesus Christ. It is a worthy consolation. One of the ways that we manage pain and tragedy is to turn it into power by making decisions, are we together, that that now gives people an opportunity to never experience that pain again if you're with me say amen. amen fact number four satan who is called the thief from scripture is the one who steals is the one who kills and the one who destroys Satan, the one who the Bible identifies as the thief in John 10.10, 10, is the one who steals, kills, and destroys. That means Satan is directly behind most, if not all, of the untimely death that we experience. Satan, according to the authority of Scripture, is the one who steals, he kills, and he destroys. Jesus gives life. So we know for a shorty that most, if not all, of the untimely deaths, the tragic deaths that happen, Satan is directly behind it. Now, please listen. There are strategies that Satan uses to make sure that he separates people from their bodies when it is not their time. 
for instance accidents for instance sicknesses and now we have all kinds of mental health issues like suicide are we together i didn't know that these kinds of things used to happen in nigeria you know i just thought because well you know nigeria has a measure of suffering and people have other issues that really occupy them i mean if your child tells you he wants to kill himself you say please just transfer your clothes to someone else first before you know <laughs> just joking but you would not believe how many especially young people right now people who go to look for drugs and swallow it because they want to end their lives i hope you know that suicide is demonic it's not just a psychological issue it is it is the presence of a demonic spirit and if there's anybody here in that state your deliverance comes now in the name of jesus accidents mental health conditions respectfully speaking this mental health thing that i don't know how that spirit landed in europe that spirit is sweeping across europe you see vibrant young men and women medical doctors will tell you the amount of young people who are getting into mental health states and the moment you attain that state the next thing is suicidal thoughts they just locked themselves up one time a family called me and said i need to pray that i think their child locked himself or so and would not open uh, and and took a knife or so and and passed a letter behind the door by so 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 time he was going to kill himself you think it's easy for a person to kill himself it's a spirit i'm saying it again any family or any generational cause or any pattern that makes people to be suicidal in the name of jesus christ whether it is in your life or your family inherited or outsourced through ignorance this night this moment right now you are delivered now every spirit that says kill yourself is of the devil every spirit that says go to the river and fall down enter a well take knife take guns kill yourself swallow whatever kind of go and drug abuse and you would think that it's just for people who are poor people who are downcast intelligent people educated people victims of this spirit how about patterns of diseases please listen I told you about the restoration of the healing anointing before Jesus returns. It is not just my proposition. The word of God attests to it. Those who have gone ahead of us. Listen, when we pray for people to be healed, it is more than just a man of God displaying anointing. One of the major and most effective tools that the devil has used through the ages and is even using in this end time to cut short the lives of people listen carefully is sickness and diseases mysterious diseases that have no medical explanation it looks like cancer but it's not cancer it looks like a blood pressure but it's not blood pressure thank god for tongue talking doctors that we have that are helping patients now to make sense of spiritual things there are many doctors that will call patients aside and say, listen, I am a medical practitioner. I'm bound by the ethics and the conduct of my profession. But let me tell you, I am a man of God and I'm a woman of God. If you know a man of God who is anointed, run there first while we are treating you. Because this one is more than headache. Hallelujah. Patterns of sickness especially when people get to certain age now there are biological realities that are there and, and there's a place to manage them but listen let me tell you is it's like there is an there is an onslaught of mysterious diseases and infirmities there are people who cannot eat i was ministering at the miracle service yesterday and the lord brought a word about a gentleman fine young man and this gentleman, anything he eats, he will throw it up. Are we together? 
mysterious sicknesses a little girl 13 year old you know could not move her fingers like this let me tell you the truth don't tolerate sickness don't tolerate sickness i repeat don't tolerate sickness apostle but i'm currently not feeling fine don't worry thank god for the medical attention doctors are instruments of god's mercy we have a medical stand they are very professional qualified doctors sitting and listening we are we are a miracle ministry but we have doctors celebrate them hallelujah however we are not fools we know when this thing is a spirit are we together yes sir and let me speak over someone in the name of jesus that disease that has defied medicine that disease that has defied do you know listen before i pray for you i once ministered to a woman i could not believe it if not because i'm surrounded by doctors i probably would think it's a lie 33 surgeries how many 33 what part of your body is left 33 surgeries they remove this it reappears they do this one it appears somewhere have you heard people say i feel something moving in my body today is on my head tomorrow is on my chest let me speak to you if there is any spirit moving roaming around your body in the name of jesus the lord sent you here tonight i i break that cause from your life now I break that curse from your life now. Please sit down. Sickness. How about accidents? I've had the honor of praying for people and visiting a few in the hospital. And let me tell you, don't think it's everyone who has accident that was careless. Some of them will tell you my steering locked. I tried to move it I was not sleeping I know someone who just said he was driving and the place just went dark like that and the next thing he knew he was in the hospital ah plotters of evil I pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ every arrow that flies by day the noisome pestilence please receive this oath in the name of Jesus Christ evil that is plotted against you it returns back to the devil back to the devil back to the devil hallelujah praise the lord the worst flight issue i've had in my life one time it was a very short journey i don't know what happened and it was a very just a very short distance and we, we were in the air and that plane it was as if a spirit just held it and said everybody in this plane today just know that it's over it was shaking left and right and when the pilot started talking his voice was shaking then I sat down and I said no I have no covenant with death not through a plane mm -mm. when we landed everybody clapped everybody clapped because people were already thinking oh God so this is was this the plan when I left home this morning if it will crash you will not enter in the name of Jesus I say it again if it will crash you will not enter by all means if it will crash you will not enter but if you enter may it not crash hallelujah praise the name of the lord that someone is driving now people have their individual carelessness don't get don't get me wrong there are people who are very careless but someone is driving and suddenly the car loses control no brakes no nothing the brake is not working again and here is a trailer coming no 
he shall keep his angels charge over you koinonia hear me i stand by the god of heaven we will not bury anybody in this place Please sit down. It is a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the major tools that Satan has used is accidents and sicknesses, mysterious, inexplainable sicknesses. Now the one that is already becoming a trend is people just dying in their sleep. Have you heard of such things? That someone just goes in peace and lies down sometimes 10 minutes and you see them jacking trying you know this kind of demonic thing has happened to me before so I understand it has happened to some of you if you are honest you try to wake up and it looks like you cannot wake up the Bible says I lay me down and I slept he said I wait whatever does not want you to wake up I curse it now I curse it now I curse it now. Help them, please. I curse it now. I curse it now. I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Listen, I remember those days. It was, it was almost like a nightmare to go to bed. Once it is evening, I just begin to think I hope this battle will not come and you lie down sometimes you can be hearing people physically talking but to wake up if you are going through this experience don't keep quiet I'm praying for you now it's a demonic thing it's the spirit of death I reject it from your life now I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. That you go to bed and wake up. Now hear me. One of the ways that Satan hijacks people is by connecting them to the spirit of the grave using the face of dead people. That people have you have no business hear me there is the spirits of just men made perfect but there is the spirit of death using the faces of men anybody visiting you any stranger manipulating you coming in your dreams coming in your sleep using the faces of people saying let us go let us go I caught you away from them right now I caught you away from them right now I caught you away from them right now. Hear me. Let me pray for every parent here. The spirit that says you will not reap from your children, that with your own hands you will bury your children. I stand by the God who called me and I declare the spirit of untimely death is caused from your children. Caused from your children. You will not sit down thinking your child is in school. Then they will send you an evil report. Listen, I'm not trying to play with your emotions. We are dealing with serious things here. Do you know, I remember a time, sometime in Joss, when they said, you know, children go to play around the river or so during Christmas. And one gentleman just went there and that was it. Just drowned in a river. I forbid that from your children. Sickness, accidents, and manipulating the realm of the spirit and just taking people away. You see, let me give you, sit down please, sit down. Sit down. Let me encourage you if you can. Huh? By the grace of God, if God grants you the grace and the time, one of these days, just take 15 minutes, walk with a doctor and visit the hospitals. Even if it's just to bless the patients and say hello. 
something will happen to your mind you will see the reality of evil hallelujah honestly everybody understands this message but the people who really understand this message are doctors and medics because they see this every day accidents you just hear that someone said let me quickly go and um let me buy something and come back wait for me and the next thing they call you and say are you related to so 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 and so he's gone don't say it is the will of god i'm telling you again the will of god is revealed in his word so number one god's plan is longevity for the saints number two the bible clearly tells us that we can die before our time that life and years can be added life and years can be subtracted number three the bible also reveals that in most cases god is not behind the untimely departure of the saints there are few exceptions to that and then number four the bible identifies satan as that thief who comes to steal to kill and to destroy and he uses principally the strategies of accidents circumstantial tragedies or inflicting pain and diseases and sickness to our bodies or walking in fraternity with the realm of the spirit to directly cut short your life let me show you a few keys right now i truly sense that as i begin to teach right now that some of you what i am talking about may not directly affect you but there are people connected to you by bloodline they may not be listening so don't be surprised that as the power of god touches you it's not really for you he's touching you maybe for your mother who may not know and the devil is about to take her and god said thank god you came for koinonia that as the power of god is touching you he's bringing deliverance for her maybe it's your father maybe it's your siblings for some of you even your family members Please hear me. Before I begin to give you the keys, God is ministering to me. Any family that has repetition of patterns of death, every year or every two, two years or every three, three years, somebody must die. And for some, it has even happened this year. In the name of Jesus, the last one that happened is the last that happens in that family. Patterns of death broken right now. hallelujah there are regions where everybody lives long provided you are poor provided you are visionless provided you are purposeless the moment you love God you go to school God helps you you get a job aha uh -huh. that spirit begins to look for you you can refuse to die and i want to share with you the keys listen please hear me when we teach on longevity and when we teach you the keys that make for victory over it's not the fear of death as for the believer in christ though whether it is in this life or after this life you are victorious forever so please understand that this is not some pentecostal way of managing death no or managing the fear of death we have left the issue of the fear of death but our longevity is important for ourselves our families the purposes of God the continuity of God's program this is not an issue of death Paul said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord there is a way believers transit in victory and with honor Paul said I have fought the I, I, I fought the fight of faith I have finished my course Jesus himself said it is finished he was not surprised
what are the kingdom mysteries what are the keys please i beseech you in the name of jesus i can go down my knees for you if you want me to to listen and pay attention to what i'm telling you because for some of you this will be the lifeline it will be literally the lifeline between now and the the continuity of your effective living please pay attention this is more than a sermon tonight's message is an instrument of deliverance that god is bringing to you and for those following online i want you to pay attention you may need to call somebody and say connect now you are about to hear something and receive an impartation do you know that there are people scheduled to die every week right now is sunday there are people based in the realm of the spirit they are already dead by saturday you will see Abba, that you found your way here or you have connected yourself here by the privilege of God's grace I announce to you again that plot is destroyed forever all right let's write when we say I shall not die it is beyond just mere speaking it takes more than a wish there are kingdom keys that have been allotted for the saints remember that victory in this kingdom is light dependent are we together key number one are you ready the first key based on the word of god that guarantees longevity is submitting to jesus who is the resurrection and the life write it down please the first key that guarantees longevity is submitting to jesus who the Bible calls the resurrection and the life. Your encounter with the resurrection and the life is your surest guarantee. The resurrection and the life. In John 4 and verse 16, Jesus said, John 4, 16, please give it to us. My apologies, John 11, John 11, from verse 25 to 26, John 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, 26. And whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? It's up to you to answer. Are we together? So you must submit. It is a risk to know that Satan is determined to cut short your life if allowed and then not submit genuinely to the resurrection and the life. When you are sick, medically speaking, you don't run to a carpenter for help. Is that true? You don't run to a carpentry shop. You run to a pharmacist or to a hospital the one who addresses your situation jesus did not just call himself the way the truth and the life jesus did not just call himself the apostle of our faith jesus did not just call himself the high priest in this regard he calls himself the resurrection and the life so your first key to walking in longevity biblically is submitting to jesus the resurrection and the life number two very quickly is someone learning the second biblical key that is responsible for the longevity of the saints that gives you immunity and victory over untimely death is the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord the spirit of reverence please write it down the fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. The Bible says the fear of the Lord prolonged days. Look at it. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Is that in your Bible? The fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It means to honor him. It means to revere him. It means to respect him. And the 
clearest proof of the fear of the Lord is obedience. The fear of the Lord prolonged days. Proverbs chapter 9. Let's look at 10 and 11. Proverbs 9, 10 and 11. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 11. It says for by me, the fear of the Lord now, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Shout a loud amen. amen. I declare that the baptism of the fear of the Lord will rest upon your heart tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2, Proverbs chapter 3, we're examining the second key. Please do not forget what I'm teaching you. Number one, submitting to the authority and the lordship of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Now number two, the fear of the Lord. He says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2. He says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse 3. Oh, well, just one and two. That's fine. Length of days and peace shall they add to thee. In 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's read verse 14. This was Solomon's encounter with the God of the Bible in a dream. It says, 1 Kings 3, 14, And if thou wilt walk in my ways, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. So longevity is not just the issue of claiming. There is a way that you fear the Lord determined to obey him that no devil will cut short your life before your time. Number three, because I want us to pray tonight. Are you ready? The third key that the Bible teaches is the power of scripture-based confession. The power of scripture-based confession. You want to drive untimely death far from you? There is a role that your mouth and your speaking has to play. Psalms 34 from verse 12 down to 14. Please give it to us. Psalms 34, 12 to 14. He said, what man, Apostle Peter repeated this now in the New Testament. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days? that he may see good it's a question who is the person who is interested in having long life and many days what's the condition 13 it says keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit or guile he, he tells you that every time you speak your words have an implication on your longevity or otherwise now most people think it does not matter there are negative words this is not about some pentecostalism there is a there is a kingdom way that we speak even from a medical standpoint there you begin to speak negatively negatively about your life and about others you are on your way to your grave early and it should not be so hallelujah I don't die Nigeria the realm of the spirit does not care whether you are joking it records it and it becomes a tool for execution hallelujah there are some things you should not say about yourself no no it's not about being a baby Christian or being mature this is the modus operandi of the kingdom if you desire to walk in longevity to walk in the fullness of the days ordained for you your speaking matters hallelujah is someone already learning speakings Proverbs 18 21 popular scripture 18 21 Proverbs death and life 
are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof what is the fruit of death i mean death and life are both fruits and it's interesting that the same tongue can produce any one of them in the name of jesus this is the day the lord has made i declare that i rejoice in it and i am glad hallelujah i enjoy longevity and health not longevity and pain in the name of jesus long life is my portion in christ and i decree and declare it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof you don't speak death speak negative things you know i was watching i was having a meeting with the leaders i think a week or two ago and then um the convention kenneth kenneth copeland's convention was was ongoing and i was just looking at that man in his 80s and he was standing unassisted i remember many many years ago he would speak literally over the various parts of his body with childlike faith and many people who were bragging and said there's nothing they've long gone and this man is still standing only fools bishop oedipo will say doubt proof be careful when people arrogantly downplay the principles of the kingdom they will not guarantee you when tragedy strikes the bible says follow them who through faith and patience by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of meeting a few old people some of the oldest fathers of faith in this nation hallelujah yes and every time i have an opportunity to talk to them i usually would ask them the secret please daddy or whoever please what can you share with me if there is one key to long life what would it be and in most cases among the things that they share it will be about speaking well speaking well speaking correctly hallelujah this is more than positive confession this is not just psychology although that is profitable in itself but we are talking of a scripture based confession you are declaring to create you are declaring to maintain are we together now words are so powerful that jesus himself calls himself the word the logos of god i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the lord amen that's my confession i truly believe it that i shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Sing it one more time from your heart. I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So from tonight, Koinonia, hear me. Teach your children. Husband change your confession wife change your confession parents change your confession children man of god leaders start speaking to be consistent with the word of god in the name of jesus i am blessed i decree and declare that the life of god flows through me i decree and declare that length of days is my portion in the mighty and matchless name of jesus many many people made noise they laughed at those confessing the word some of those people are not alive today and some of the people with childlike faith who kept speaking after many decades they are still standing ah. though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song We'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you that words matter. Words matter. The first fall and destruction of a man came because of something he heard. When man fell, the Lord came to the garden and said, Adam, 
where art thou? He said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? You expose your ears to something and to someone. And in addition to speakings, manage the things that get into your eye and your ear gate. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. These are not elementary spiritual things at all. Most of you authorize demons to begin to afflict you because you expose yourself to content that you were not supposed to expose your mind to. Hallelujah. Be careful from reading all kinds of nonsense, magic books. There are people today, and let me say it especially to younger people who are in ministry. Let your search for revelation not lead you to demonic things where you go and encounter all kinds of spirits, books of the dead, because you are trying to access realms, 15 dimensions of consciousness, and you start reading those things until you find yourself there. You come back with all kinds of familiar spirits, sufficient for your growth and your excelling is the truth that is contained in scripture the bible says many listen it says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book give it to us john 20 please the last verse that would be verse what now verse the last please look for it for us john 20 the last verse i want to show you that scripture it says many miracles that jesus did John chapter 20 and many verse 30 thank you many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not written in this book next verse please 31 it says but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name so it is true that it is not everything that happened that was recorded in scripture but by the intelligence of the spirit the scripture as contained in this already has with the breath of the spirit the leadership of the spirit can supply you every kind of growth you seek it doesn't mean that extra biblical materials concordances and all of the rest are bad but you must be guided there are many believers who have not been guided and they started reading all kinds of books books that start teaching you about consciousness and start exposing you you start exposing some of those things they are saying are not lies but they are very deep spiritual things it takes a level of stability in the spirit and conviction to dare those materials because they sustain the power to sway you be careful in a bit to look for a salmon many of us have traveled into hellfire to go and get messages there and you never return again because you got there in a search for mysteries and and people return with all kinds of things may we be grounded and established in the truth in the name of jesus christ In America today, there are many young children who are already demonized because of being exposed to several materials. Unfortunately, there are many institutions that teach some of these courses and even recommend them to children. And they open up themselves and you find children asking parents questions that they cannot answer. Parents, may God grant us grace. Hear me. May God grant grace. To know where to send your child to just because the school fees is much does not mean it is a good school there are many many schools that you can pay whatever million and with it you are paying the money for your child's death we need to manage it because sometimes in a bit to justify the amount of money that was spent people introduce all kinds of programs they bring all kinds, respectfully speaking, this is, these are my opinions based on scripture. All kinds of therapies and psychologies and some of these people don't fear God and they start asking the children questions until, until something happens to your children that you do not understand. Somebody shout God forbid. <laughs> Prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture hallelujah number four 
What is the fourth biblical key that controls longevity? Are you ready? Honor to parents. Honor to parents. Honor to parents, both physical and spiritual. Honor to parents. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. Please give it to us. Honor to parents, the fourth key now. Children, it says, obey your parents in the Lord. Please take note of the expression in the Lord. It didn't say, children, obey your parents anyhow, whatever they say. Mm -mm. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That means the parents are not the final say. The word of God is final say. I need to say this. I am an advocate of honor, but we need to be careful because many people have been derailed because of this scripture and because it was misunderstood. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Verse 2. It says, honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise, verse 3, that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long upon the earth. Please look up. The spirit of rebellion, the spirit of dishonor will always cut short the life of the victim. Unfortunately, our generation, except God helps us, Corporately, we're beginning to embrace dishonor. It's beginning to be fashionable. People say it doesn't matter, it's my life. But you see, there are laws. I pray that dishonor will not make our generation cost because of the ill speakings that come from the pain of parents. Hallelujah. There are many, many people today that it is not well with them because they have secured the causes and the ill speakings of parents and let me tell you when it has to do with parents bar whether they are born again or not by reason of being parents or being in a position of parents there is authority that was given to them they can speak and the realm of the spirit will obey and let me declare over someone if either by your mistake or maybe your past or not having any knowledge you have secured the cause or the ill speaking of any parent any father any mother physically or spiritually by the mystery of the blood and the mercy of God that statement is cancelled right now yeah. hallelujah now I must bring a disclaimer we men of God like scriptures like this, unfortunately, because it has been a useful tool for manipulation through the years. There is a balance to this. It does not mean just because people are asked to honor leaders, spiritual leaders especially, it does not mean that people should remove their brains and throw away and become children and become fools. No. There is intelligence in our faith work. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a balance. However, Honor still remains a potent spiritual law that is responsible for longevity. Honor your father and your mother. Some of you, by this teaching, you may need to call, even if it's your physical parents, and just tell them, listen, I'm sorry. The other day I shouted and insulted you and said, go to hell. It's just my foolishness. Accept that I'm just a child. I came for koinonia, and God used apostle to drum sense into my head. Mama, I am sorry. I desire to live long. And some of these are little children who insult everybody based on the movie, hold their hands, tap it two or three times and sit them down, show them a scripture and say, listen, young man, if you want to live long, do not make it marketable to insult everybody. Don't say it's just a little boy. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Not the rod of wickedness, the rod of correction. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Honor. Honor to parents. Honor to fathers. When God plants you within a ministry, honor the authority structure that he has put there. Are we together? This spirit of rebellion that many have carried has, has become their unbecoming. You continue to spell destruction for yourself. It ought not to be so. There is a way that the kingdom operates. If we're together, say amen. amen. Honor to parents. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20. 
Proverbs 20, 20. In fact, when we read it, let's see how we can try NIV. The Bible says, who so cursed his father or his mother, listen carefully, he said his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness. Let me tell you how it works in the spirit. If a father fights his son, he loses his honor. If a son fights his father, he loses his life. There are allocations to these offenses in the spirit. You see that? Yes. Same scripture, 2020. If a man causes his father or mother, he says his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. This is true. There are many, many people who have put themselves in this unfortunate condition, physically and spiritually across the globe because of lack of intelligence. And remember, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Number five. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? What is the fifth key? Are you ready? Engaging the mystery of the communion. The fifth key that is responsible for longevity. Engaging with understanding the mystery of the communion. Engaging the mystery of the communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please, from verse 24. Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he was now speaking about the Lord's body. We are reading to 30. Please pay attention. And he that had, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now he begins to warn. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, it is that serious that it has a spiritual implication. You shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. To 30 now. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. What does it mean to eat and drink unworthily? Without discernment and without revelation and without honor. He says, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's read 30 together. One, two, read. For this cause... Many are weak, many are sickly among you, and many sleep. He didn't say few. That means there are many people today who have gone to the grave and their offense is that they did not discern the Lord's body. I've had all kinds of teachings and opinions about the communion. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible. The communion with understanding is a deep spiritual mystery it can be idolized unfortunately like it has happened respectfully speaking across the body where people have turned the communion like a like a charm that does not contain any power do you understand remember you are the one who made the bread and you are the one who made the cup and you are now taking it so it is not that bread and cup that will give you life there is a revelation that releases the power of god upon those tokens of communion i am an advocate of the communion but i am not an advocate of religiosity without revelation the key is understanding not ritual you can be involved in the ritual of the communion and believe me you will not receive anything from it hallelujah there are people who just carry wafers, just squeeze it or bread. They just squeeze one slice or one loaf and just take tea or take something and believe they took the communion. No. The communion is not about hunger. Remember in the book of the first Corinthians, there were people who were taking it unworthy because at that time it was wine. And Paul found out that people were getting drunk after, 
you know, the remaining part of the, the, the communion set that they leave when the service is over. Some people were taking it and don't mind all these guys. And Paul had to preach and say, you guys are making a mess of this thing. You can bring damnation upon yourself. There are stories of people who with childlike faith believed in the mystery of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And they engaged the communion with understanding and it flushed out all kinds of demonic things in their body. You know the power and the mystery of blood. You see, in communicating spiritual truth, it is not really the activity that carries power. It is the understanding that supports what you are doing. Are we together? But I can tell you by the authority of scripture, in my life and based on the experience of the patriarchs and those who have gone ahead of us, the communion with understanding is a deep and powerful mystery. And what you are taking does not have to be colored for it to be communion, even if it is water and wafers. It's, it's a mystery. You just take that to help your mind assimilate and believe. Communion. There are times with understanding you can gather your family and say in the name of Jesus we stand by faith believing in the authority of the word of God and you engage that communion and watch the wonder working power of the blood and body of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me give you two more scriptures. In Exodus chapter 12, let's go to 7 and 8 then we'll jump to 12 and 13. Watch this, the mystery of the blood now. And they shall take of the blood the angel of death is about to pass over the land of Egypt and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Jump to verse 12 please for sake of time. It says for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord thy God. Verse 13. It says and the blood shall be to you for a what? A token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt go to verse 23 verse 23 now it says for the lord will pass through to smite the egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts the lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and to smite you the fifth key is engaging the mystery of the communion if someone is with me say amen. amen please I want you to pay attention to what I'm teaching you because it contains tremendous power tremendous power are you ready for number six we'll soon find somewhere to pray what is the sixth key that controls longevity are you ready master the art of spiritual warfare master the art of spiritual warfare mm, there is a warfare dimension for longevity master the art of spiritual warfare the Bible is very clear as to the fact that Satan and his cohorts using the guise of witchcraft wizardry necromancy sorcery activities of dark power that he will continually launch attack against the saints he says and i will build my church and the gates of hell jesus recognized the presence of the gates of hell even jesus is called the head of principalities and powers the Bible recognizes their existence. It will be child's play to just ignore it and believe that without engaging the world through intelligence, that by default, those arsenals will not come. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and did not find anything. Spiritual warfare. You must know how to take authority over the spirit of death. 
you must know how to take authority over infirmity, over destructions, over wasters. This is the assignment of spiritual warfare. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 13. Let's start from 17. Ezekiel 13, 17. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people. He says, give us NIV. Give us NIV. I want you to understand what is there. Okay. Son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own imagination. Prophesy against them. Let's hurry up. Next verse. He says, and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sow magic charms on their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their head in order to ensnare people. Is that in your Bible? He said, woe to these kinds of people. They tie all kinds of things. They get, they fraternize with the realm of the spirit as tokens and mediums to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? 19. It says, you have profaned me among my people for a few handfuls of barley and scraps of bread by lying to my people who listen to lies. You have killed those who should not have died and have spared those who should not have lived. 20. It says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against your magic charms, which you ensnare people like birds, and I will tear them from your arms. I will set free the people that you have ensnared like birds. Uh-huh. Next verse, please. We are reading down to 23, 21. I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. Then you will know that I am the Lord I, I am the Lord because you disheartened the righteous with your lies when I had brought them no grief and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways and so to save their lives last verse therefore you will no longer see false visions or practice divination I will save my people from your hands and then you will know that I am the Lord if you believe that say amen Brothers and sisters, I, I hate to play with your mind, but believe me when I tell you, there are people on earth who have fraternized with the devil perpetually. Access to divination, access to all kinds of sorcery, necrom necromancy, activities with the constellation, making use of mediums, animals, all against the lives and the destinies of people. This is true. There is victory in Christ, but it is engaged with knowledge. The victory in Christ does not happen arbitrarily. Not even the death on the cross automatically saves sinners until they place their faith by believing in their heart and declaring the Lordship of Jesus. That is only when, that was the only condition for salvation to be activated. So Jesus has died, risen, exalted, and yet many people still go to hell. That is the same way salvation, healing, deliverance has been purchased. But just believing that because it is finished in Christ, it means it is finished in your life. Without engaging it, it will not happen. What does warfare entail? Number one, standing based on the word of God to enforce your authority. Warfare entails standing to enforce your authority based on the word of God, not based on emotions, not based on sentiments, not based on religious chants and rituals. The basis for the believer's victory is what is written, not what I want, not what I wish. There are many chants and rituals that sincerely and respectfully speaking are only a waste of time. The only component in a believer's speaking and prayer that commands power is that which is in line with scripture. Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 11. Proverbs 1 11. It says, my son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Next verse. 
It says, let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. Reading to 16, verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our house with spoil. Look at the wicked imaginations. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. 15. It says, my son, walk down not in the way with them. Refrain from the foot of their path. 16, the last verse. It says, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Believers, please look at me. Spiritual warfare from a biblical standpoint and from a standpoint of victory is necessary for maintaining your longevity. For as long as you live, you remain a candidate for Satan's attack, a potential candidate. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Paul said, I desire to come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still on earth. The Bible has never told us that his ministry has ended. Read your Bible. The Bible tells us that victory over him is settled. But the Bible never says Satan has been prohibited from doing the things that he's doing. He still runs to and fro. Like a roaring, like, like, like a, uh, what they call it now? That he runs to and fro like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. May he not find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and having done all to stand, stand. Why would Paul be teaching you about the, the warfare armory? Are we together? He says to put the whole armor of God. Remember, it was the same Paul that gave us the exegesis of the, the Pauline epistle. The entire exegesis of redemption. Yet he teaches you that it is true that you are seated, exalted with Christ. But haven't done all to stand. Stand. For many of us, we are not consistent with our prayer. For others who are consistent with prayer, but from a standpoint of fear and defeat. Listen, you don't pray to make victory happen. You pray to establish victory that is already in Christ. There is a big difference. There is praying and you feel, okay, now let me push a little more and the devil will give way. As emotional as that sounds, you are already defeated. Believe me. Except this Bible is not true. Nobody prays from a standpoint of weakness and wins. So spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing. I have taught you. It is not the prayer that produces the victory. The prayer simply transports that which is finished in Christ and stamps it as a reality upon your life. Is it not amazing that Jesus prayed before, during, and even after his resurrection? Today that he's seated, exalted as Lord and Christ, he's still making intercession for the saints. Is he not conscious of his victory over the saints that he's still making intercession? Why will he still be interceding when he said it is finished? The fact that Jesus is still praying for you should let you know that he's aware that Satan is still on earth waging war against the saints. Why would Jesus be interceding for you? He would have said, don't say anything again. Victory is sure. Jesus, the intercessor, proves that evil is still at work. Hallelujah. You must master the art of spiritual warfare. Believers, please hear me. The times that we live in right now, especially if you're a man and a woman of God in ministry, you must pray. You must understand warfare. I'm speaking with respect to longevity, but warfare covers every aspect of your life. You are privileged to lead a ministry. You must pray for your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, protect them. Preserve them. You don't know who is traveling and who is returning. It is your responsibility. Part of your priesthood responsibility is to lift up the people that God has given to you. Listen to what Jesus said. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost lost through what various ways you can ask the Lord and believe me I'm not exaggerating more than 80% of my prayers is not for myself Lord help your people to encounter you protect them 
protect them. That was the wisdom of Job. The Bible says Job prayed for his children just in case. Just in case they went out to party and they returned back like madmen. Just in case he prayed. Parents, do you pray for your children or do you just give them money? Leaders, do you pray for the people God has given you? Don't take Satan for granted. It's not about fear. Satan is determined even over Jesus. I hope you know that Satan does not fear. There is no record in scripture that Satan is associated with fear. He flees as a result of an instruction, not fear. Satan is every other thing but fearful and foolish. Two things you cannot attribute to Satan. Hallelujah. Don't sit down and let the devil destroy your health and your life. One month you find out that something is beginning to happen to you. You got up in the morning and your legs is as if you cannot walk. Later by evening, it looks like it's your back. The next day you find out all four children, you, you go to your office and find out files are getting missing. These are signs. Don't sit down until it gets complicated and destroys you. From its infancy, you attack it in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is a semblance of hell and darkness. Therefore, I stand by the authority that is in the Lord Jesus Christ and I, I rebuke this. It is your kingdom responsibility to understand warfare. There are some of you right now, the darkness that seems to be, to be roaming around your life. I'm praying for you that you will have the grace to wake up and take responsibility. I have a responsibility to pray for you, but pray for me, pray for me has landed many people to their grave. You must take responsibility as God grants you grace. Wake up in the night, especially when the seasons are already giving you a sign that this is the devil attacking you. Abide with me fast. Falls the even tide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When all the help has fall and comfort flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with. Jesus, when it was time for him to get to the cross, he took out time to pray. He prayed to build stamina. He prayed, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Let me give you the last one and then we'll pray. Is someone learning? The seventh key as revealed from scripture that controls longevity is walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 proverbs 3 13 we're reading down to 18 happy is the man that findeth wisdom koinonia please look up and the man that getteth understanding. Next verse, please. It said, For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. 16 now. Length of days. There you find it again. With wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. The Bible says, collect both. The right and the left hands are open for you as far as wisdom is concerned. Wisdom is a giver. Don't collect wealth and riches and live length of days. 17. Reading to 18 now. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. All her parts are peace. She is a tree of life. A tree of what? Life. To them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Listen, there is a very direct relationship between working in wisdom and longevity. For instance, 
Paying attention to your health is wisdom. Paying attention to your health. Revelations 22, please give it to us, verse 2. Paying attention to your health, what you eat. The Bible says, and in the midst of the street, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Let me tell you, believers, there are times that you may do everything well and kill yourself simply because of carelessness and lack of wisdom. There are many people today, this is the balance because people focus on the spirituality of longevity and then they forget the other aspects like that which pertains unto their health. I showed you our medical stand. We have an intelligent team of medical doctors and even though we are a ministry that believes in signs and wonders, there has been an advocacy for a long time in the body of Christ as in a bid to demonstrate the excellency of the divine life, which is true. Subliminally, we men of God have programmed members and programmed people into rejecting anything that has to do with medicine or the science of wellness. We have thrown it away and said it does not matter. The Bible says man shall live by two things. One, bread. Two, words. There is the physical aspect. There is the spiritual aspect. Man does not live by words alone. And man does not live by bread alone. If your words are correct and your bread is wrong, you will die. If your bread is correct and the words are wrong, you will die. Both bread and words have to be in place. This is Jesus teaching now. Are we together now? For many of us, you have done well. The words are correct. The spiritual investments are correct. But my goodness, there is death in the pot. In fact, let's go to that scripture. Death in the pot. Elisha. Let me search for it now. Death in the pot. It, 2 Kings 4 from verse 38. 2 Kings 4, 38. And Elisha came to Gilgal. And there was death in the land. Famine now. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant um can you give us niv again let me make reference to niv i just want your understanding right he says he said to his servant put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man reading to 41 next verse one of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine whatever that is we know it is not good he found a wild vine. He gathered some of its gods and filled the fold of his cloak. When he returned, he cut them into the pot of stew. Though no one knew what they were. 40. The stew was poured out for the men. But as they began to eat, remember they were prophets too. They cried out, O oh man of God, there is death in the pot how many pots today have death in it there are many pots in restaurants that have death there are many pots in our homes you think it is food you are eating the prophet said death is not only found in the grave it can be found even in the pot you can cast the one in the grave but have you casted the death that is in the pot and they could not eat it 41 Elisha said get some flour and he put it into the pot and said serve it to the people to eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot listen ladies and gentlemen can I be honest with you there are many many believers and the unfortunate thing is that because largely in Africa and Nigeria we come from a background of deprivation please listen when God begins to bless us the first thing we focus on is getting exterior things to prove that our life is working rather than focusing on our health. So chances are excellent that when things begin to work out, you want to get a car, you want to get a house, you want to get a nice cloth and people say, my God, things are changing in your life. And then we punish ourselves, dying inside and looking at life outside. There are many people who are careless over their bodies and their health today and sincerely 
they have the power to invest just a little in their health. There are many believers who hate medical checkup. They say, no, this is demonic. There are many believers, I've told you that science and medical people will tell us that many diseases would have been solved if the people were attentive enough to detect it at infancy and to deal with it. Most people resort to medicine as a last resort. I have taught you here, ladies and gentlemen, and for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time, medicine is not anti-spirituality. My perspective of medicine, I hope you know that Luke was a doctor. He was the disciple of Jesus, Dr. Luke. Hallelujah. It's true that Jesus rose up from the dead, but what about those who took care of his body for three days? The body did not just lie down in the cold on the cross. Someone wrapped, the woman said she came to clean the body. So there is a place for medicine. Listen, listen. If you don't believe this, you will, you will rubbish yourself. It is true that divine health and healing is real. Don't get me wrong. But remember, it is a journey of transition in the spirit to attain onto that point where you can walk in health in experience. And while you are on that journey, by the time you are afflicted and you pray, and it looks like nothing is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, even if something is happening, it is wise to consult the doctors. If you are truly healed, medicine will not fight your miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are people dying in silence. Your heart is palpitating. You almost cannot, you can't climb the stairs. You don't know what is wrong. At least let them tell you what is wrong. Then you can now choose. If you want to go the path of faith, you are not going on blind faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Madam, you try to conceive once, twice, three times. It looks like it's not working. Don't just sit down and say, I know it is a demon in my spirit. Go and see a doctor. Have a discussion. Let them find out what is wrong. Then if it defines medicine, that's why God put both the doctors and us. Respectfully speaking, I tell you, believers are very careless over their health. Very, very careless. Hallelujah. There are many of us who continue to eat all kinds of things, including overeating. I respect your perspective about food, but let me give you an honest advice. Even if fasting did not have any spiritual reward, I can tell you, ask anybody, fasting, eating every day, anytime, anytime you see food is lost. You have to repent. The name of that lust is gluttony. And it kills. It kills. Hallelujah. And by the way, let me tell you, don't say, I am not very fat. It doesn't mean you are free. It doesn't mean you are free. Hear what I'm saying now. So don't get into that deception that until you look like you are you have weight and then mm -mm. there are many people who are about dying diabetes all kinds of things kidney failure different troubles in their bodies and they don't care until the day they collapse for some of you by this teaching you may need to go to and do a medical checkup what are you afraid of do a medical checkup if they say you are fine has that not strengthened your faith Hallelujah. Pay attention to the kind of water you drink as God grants you grace. Pay attention to the kind of food you eat. Many of us, you see food that is already beginning to spoil. Plus Jesus minus Satan. Amen. You just warm it in the microwave and death in the pot. You want to find out more about nutrition? Don't, I'm, I'm not the person to, there are many people who are gifted and graced. Go to the medical stand. They will guide you. It is not seen to be under very good organic supplements. They can help you. Many of these things we keep taking and feeling like we are rich. It is death. Minimize some of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And more than minimizing these things, Please, I impart upon you the grace to fast. Even if you don't want to pray, just fast and sleep with no food. It is still a level of liberty you are administering to your body. 
Hallelujah. There are people who will never drink up to one bottle of water in a day. They will drink five bottles, Sprite, Coca-Cola, any other one. And you see people in a restaurant, four wraps of swallow and three kinds of soup, half of chicken, only you, and then three bottles and then one tiny pure water. You are, this is death. I, 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 I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I owe you a responsibility to tell you it is not the manifestation of wealth. And we have all kinds of cultural things. I suffered. Now is my time. You, you, you want to live long. Remember the last key, walking in wisdom. Please laugh but pay attention. Laugh but pay attention. Hallelujah. Laugh but pay attention. And you know in many cultures, the proof of honor is food. The proof of honor is what? So one person can visit five families between 12 to 6. And everywhere he goes, you went here, they gave you yam. You just went to say hi to the other neighbor, there's pounded yam. Then the other one, there's rice. The other one, there's fish. And you ate all. Appa. The leaves are for the healing of the nations. I don't know about you, but this man standing before you by the grace of God is still here for a long time. As far as the program of God demands, not out of fear. Do not die the death of a fool through carelessness. Let me encourage you again. Listen, do you know between age zero and age 20, there is a biological strategy for your feeding and for your living. Between age 20 to 40, there is a formula. Between 40 and 50, 60, there is a formula. There are things your body doesn't want. You say, I'm a youth. You, are, you can be a youth in your mind. But as far as the length of days is concerned, time is going. And you need to begin to adjust yourself through maturity. And don't bring death to yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat again. There's miracle service coming. But ladies and gentlemen, for some of you, you need to go and begin to examine yourself. Is it death that is happening to me? Leave the issue of the dreams and the rest. We're praying. But what could be the issue right now? Why is it that I'm a young man of 25, yet I cannot breathe well? I climb the stairs just four, four stairs up and I'm already breathing. What is wrong? Please help me. Could it be them? Okay, just do some exercise. Take care of yourself. What could be the problem? Maybe you are not taking water. Cardiovascular issues have killed more people. Maybe even than demons. I impart upon you grace to walk in wisdom. Supernatural grace to walk in wisdom. Supernatural grace to walk in wisdom. Another example of walking in wisdom is walking with the wise. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not challenging your opinion, but let me tell you the truth. Things like drinking and smoking and all of these vices where you dump all kinds of junk into your body, you are killing yourself. You are killing yourself very fast, not even slowly. Apostle, it does not matter. It's your life. But you see, in taking decisions, it is wicked and selfish to not think about your children and not think about those connected to you as you take decisions. Are we together now? Yes. There are many people today who through their carelessness, they have left liabilities for society simply because they were not thoughtful enough. Any major decision you're about to take in life, especially your health, I want you to think about all those who are connected to you. What will happen now if I die? Some of you, for instance, you came from non-Christian families and you are the only Christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow. If you are careless with your life and you pass on now, what becomes of them? When you are thoughtful, you will not be careless with your life and your body. What happens to you now if you pass on leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school? 
it's, it was not an attack that killed you just carelessness with your health let me tell you this my deliverance over this issue of health came i've shared it with you at the end of the year when i'm doing my personal retreat i gauge my progress against many indices my spiritual growth mental transformation health and wellness relationships finances purpose and all of that and for three years consecutively i found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health for very justifiable reasons i could travel for a meeting return back in the night return back i had to make up my mind to say mr man if you die and you kill yourself let it be known to you that you killed yourself because i know that god loves me sincerely he has invested his love and his jealousy upon my life and i made up my mind i said no more even if it is one step at a time i will begin to correct it this is a prophetic word for someone right now and for somebody the truth is you have the means god has helped you it's time to be serious he that walks with the wise shall be wise you are in a house where there's smoke carbon monoxide all the time and you are just inhaling this with your children you have the money to move to a better place please get out of that place for the sake of the safety of your children you are in a room there is a jerry can of kerosene there is a jerry can of petrol it next to your bed your nose is directly touching the the petrol while you are sleeping and you have five million naira ten million naira in your account when you die what is going to happen to the money we need to learn to be wise i've told you the purpose of resources is for efficiency and time redemption don't pile millions and billions in your account and be cutting short your days because of selfishness greed you have a car of 20 30 million lying down in your house and you cannot put hundred thousand naira to invest in your health it is not wise I'm sorry if I'm harsh. We're wrapping up, but I need to say this. I rather have a car of one million naira packed and have a body of one billion naira health wise. It was a wise bargain. You can't be having cars and houses, estates and mansions, and then to invest in your health is a problem. There are many people who cannot spend 20,000 naira. They can go to a restaurant, a priority restaurant, and spend 500,000 in a moment. Just proving a point, but for their health. It is often said that health is wealth. A dying man has the desire to get his health back, not his businesses back, not the estates back. One of the greatest contributions you can make in a life, let me tell you, is helping them to know god and love god and helping them to live healthy as much as possible when you are buying birthday gifts for people try it concentrate on their health don't buy things you know they will not use hallelujah you see someone whose whose leg is is tiny like this you buy you go and waste your money and buy a shoe of over 1 million size 45 that person is not even going to use it are we together you can get health products you can invest fruits veggies you can even buy a book about living in health and give the person you have invested in that person's life I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. It's a, it's a determination. I will be healthy. I will be healthy. Because there is a lot to do for the kingdom. And I know how I stretch myself by reason of the work that I do. Most people see me and say, Apostle, do you rest? I, I may not rest every day, but I've been able to squeeze out a system and at least it's working. Hallelujah. So when you try to call, maybe in the middle of the night, and you say, Apostle, you told us you, you'll be there for us. Remember, I am resting. Remember, I am resting. Because believers have a way of blackmailing you spiritually. They just come up with all kinds of emotions and say, remember, you said, I said I will be there for you. Jesus, who said you'll be there for you? Why didn't you quarrel here? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you.
Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'll be there for you as much as possible. But when I'm, when I'm resting, I'm resting. It's as simple and honest as that. Gone are the days where people shout and say, you are this, and start sending you scriptures and say, listen, the Bible says a shepherd that cannot... Just delete it and rest, please. Allow people to... You, know, you, should, you should be secured enough to not be bullied by all those, those childish things. You see... When you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. And that's the end of it. I made this mistake when we started newly. I would walk myself and not rest. My deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral. I saw a crucifix and it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man. Now, I love people. Don't get me wrong. But it was not my face that was on that crucifix. So I will be there for everybody as much as I can. There are pastors and leaders who have thrown their families in disarray, thrown their health in disarray, thrown their finances in disarray, all in a bid to serve people who will largely not be grateful. Love people, but don't be a fool. In the name of Jesus. So seven keys I have given you. Let's do a recap and then we pray and I speak over your life. Number one, God's desire and plan. Listen carefully. That God's desire and plan for all of us is to walk in health, vitality, and longevity. I have a whole series on the healing ministry. That's for next year. Hallelujah. And number two, that the Bible clearly says that our lives can be cut short if we do not comply with the scriptural conditions that make for longevity. The Bible shows us that a man's life can be extended, prolonged, and a man's life can be cut short. Number three, we said that the Bible reveals that in many regards, God is not responsible for the premature departure of the saints. Number four, we said how that Satan is that thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and that primarily, the two or three tools that through history we have seen that have been his most effective tools in destroying people. One, accidents. Two, sicknesses and diseases. And then number three, spiritual issues. Issues that relate to dreams and all kinds of oppressions. I now began to give you a few keys. Seven of them. Number one, we said you must submit to Jesus who is the resurrection and the life number two we said you must have the fear of the lord that the fear of the lord has longevity connected to it number three your words scripture based confessions that you must learn to speak words of life words of faith number four honor to parents honor generally honor carries within it life honor to parents both spiritual and physical number five we said engaging the mystery of the communion the mystery of the communion with understanding when you engage the communion with understanding it has within it longevity number six we said you must master the art of spiritual warfare prayer and intercession warding of the arsenals of hell and establishing the victory that is in Christ over your life, over your body. And then number seven, we said walking in wisdom. Wisdom as it is, pertains your living. Wisdom as it pertains relationships. Wisdom as it pertains the matters of health. And most importantly, wisdom as far as feeding your food, nutrition, your vitality is concerned. These are irrefutable keys, ladies and gentlemen. Irrefutable keys. Irrefutable keys. Hallelujah. And of course, to cap up everything, 
the power of prophetic speakings and declarations over your life hallelujah he said i've been commanded to bless i have blessed and it can, they cannot be cursed so the power of the blessing prophetic decrees over your life it is very powerful i am a product of the blessing of many people almost every elderly person i have seen when i see elderly people that truly have been able to demonstrate health and longevity when i meet them very quickly i'm looking for a way to connect in the name of jesus daddy son can you speak over my life i remember our father bishop Onubogo. i don't know how many times i've told him i said from the depth the bowels of your spirit 84 years only gone to the hospital once in 84 years with his wife 74 years both strong and alive ah i speak life you're gonna leave oh my brother my sister i speak life you are the head and not the tail you will prevail I speak life, help me. Don't give up the fight for your life. You will live another life. That if Christ tarries at 84 years, surrounded with your children and your grandchildren, you have secured the covenant of life that nations will come to you to say teach us the ways of the Lord what did you find that has kept you in the midst of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destruction that wastes in noonday you have been able to have access to this mystery and you will tell them this is it if you are from a family that has suffered untimely death this is your chance if you are from a family where maybe things you have been threatened you do not even know who is next now because it looks like death just comes to pick people like an eagle coming to pick something on land you can be that voice of deliverance by reason of this teaching I shall not die he says but live and declare I shall not die you are a minister of life a minister of life a minister of life i made up my mind that by the grace of god and as much as god grants me grace that all who are connected to me by natural descent that by the grace of god they will have the honor of tasting long life i engage every one of these keys i believe it with my heart i believe it jesus the resurrection and the life now remember let me tell you again before we pray challenging the spirit of death and contending for longevity is not out of fear if you fear death you are already defeated you cannot live your life being afraid god forbid but if i transit right now the only thing will be that i did not finish my assignment but as far as victory is concerned no that one was secured a long time ago i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday he said what shall separate us from the love of Christ is it famine is it death I have come near this thing called death many times and by his mercy and by his spirit I have been preserved I can tell you ladies and gentlemen please hear me the greater standpoint of victory is not the fear of death the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage there are many who have transited in glory today and i can tell you paul said for for me to live is christ and to die is gain we are not afraid of death oh no not at all not at all that was already settled when we came and told Jesus take everything we meant it and we are glad hallelujah but as far as this is concerned if I were dead you will not hear what you are hearing now Paul said I desire to go but I found out to stay is expedient for you 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I shall not die. Please rise up on your feet. Everyone stand, please. Everyone stand. Let's minimize movement. We're going to pray and then I make an altar call. Just one prayer point tonight. Father, I obtain grace. In the name of Jesus, obtain grace to walk in keeping with these keys that you have revealed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. The untimely death that took my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my relatives, the untimely death that keeps sweeping people across my territory, I decree and declare that I'm free from it. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. I decree and declare I have no covenant with death. I obtain grace. Someone is praying. Grace, grace, mention the various areas, the various keys you can remember and receive grace from heaven. A global family, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from your room, your office, wherever you are connecting from. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die. Not out of fear, but my longevity is important for my life, my family, the program of God. And for as long as my assignment remains, I reject death by the power of the Holy Spirit. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus, the resurrection and the life. I obtain grace to walk in the fear of the Lord, obeying his precepts and living by the truth of scripture. Someone pray. I decree and declare that from tonight, my words will only minister life and health and vitality. Pray. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? No covenant with death. No covenant with untimely death. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. According to Psalm 118 and verse 17. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. I live. I shall not die. I live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall not die. In the name of Jesus. Not by accident. Not by sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer request for you. I want you to declare over your physical body prophesy longevity from your head to your toe I want you to call your organs by name if you can and begin to declare in the name of Jesus my blood is cleansed by the spirit no killer disease around my blood my system is sanitized by the power of the Holy Ghost the various organs and systems in your body prophesy it will not deteriorate with age for the bible says they that be planted in the house of the lord that they will flourish in the courts of our god that in old age they will be fat and flourishing pray my eyes will not go dim in the name of jesus i rebuke arthritis i have strength and vitality no cardiovascular diseases in the name of Jesus Christ he keepeth his bones so that none is missing I have a covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken my eyes are bright as the sun in the name of Jesus Christ I have the hearing ear the seeing eye strength to walk in the name of Jesus
strength to walk. He empowers me with strength from heaven like hinds feet. My natural strength will not be abated in the name of Jesus. As my year, so shall my strength be. Perfect vitality in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please hear me. You know someone who is struggling with his or her health? Next week is our final miracle service for 2022. It's not the final service, but the final miracle service. We don't do miracle services in December, although all the services in December, by the grace of God, will take time to praise God, but I want to really take the time to minister to people. Please listen. I want to charge you and challenge you by the God of heaven. Everybody you know who is trusting God to touch their bodies, their minds, their finances, their work with God, I want you to draw them and tell them, come and experience the mighty hand of God. We are going to be taking time to really pray for the sick. Because of time constraints, sometimes I live and I really feel bad in my heart because I just feel that more could be done, particularly for people who are sick. Some of these people, there is no other solution. There is no other way if God does not help them. Hallelujah. So let me declare over your life, and I want you to believe, I have received myself the blessings and the grace of fathers and elders. You've heard about my encounter in the West and many of the fathers by the grace of God and by the privilege of his hand, almost all the major fathers of faith that are extended in age. I've had the honor of having them pray and among the many things I requested was grace for long life because this journey is still far. And you see, when people have something, they can give. Hallelujah. Some of you have the privilege of having parents that have lived long. Let me give you an advice. Package a gift. Don't go empty-handed, putting your hand in your pocket and say, Daddy, bless me. If I'm your father, I'll tell you, leave this place. You have not learned. When it was time for Isaac to bless Jacob and Esau, bless Esau, later would bless Jacob. He said, go and make me venison. I hope you know that where they got the food, Jacob's food was just at his backyard. So it was not an issue of luck. He said, go. It is a law. Go and package a seed. Package something that gives your parents joy or anybody you know that God has helped and trusted with long life and tell them in the name of Jesus, I believe in this grace and I pray that if you will, just speak a word over my life and you will be surprised. You will be surprised. Hallelujah. Yes. I have seen strength and vitality in old age. I have seen people strong. They can, they can almost play football. A man who can play football in his 80s. There are young people right now, 32, 35, 40, 42, 43. And it's almost as if they cannot, they lift a bucket of water and they fall together with the bucket. Such as I have, you see. So these things you see, is not just something you invented. Longevity that comes from scripture, backed up by the heartfelt blessing of those that have spoken over us. The times are evil, ladies and gentlemen. Security can only do so much for you. You need an immunity that is above and beyond this realm. Secured by the word of God. Secured by the immutability of his covenants and his counsel. In the name of Jesus I decree and declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Because God has allowed us to teach this over the body of Christ. To reintroduce this grace for long life again over the body of Christ, I declare the fullness of your days, fulfill it. Yeah.
the fullness of your days fulfill it every pattern you have seen that is now beginning to manifest in your life and you are afraid will I die am I also going to go like that by reason of tonight's teaching I cut you away from it forever the spirit of untimely death that is sweeping across Africa across Nigeria destroying brilliant minds bright potentials before their time I decree and declare you are covered supernaturally we're approaching the festive period and naturally people travel some by sea some by air some by land and then some by any other means people will travel within the country and across the globe I decree and declare no evil report shall be heard about you and let's agree right now for anyone connected to you who is currently in the hospital or struggling with any sickness or someone who came here for service let me stretch my hands over you before we wrap up every devil of sickness that followed you here it does not matter what name it is called in the name of Jesus be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now I command your blood to be cleansed now I pray for every doctor here and every doctor hearing me every lab attendant every paramedic we empower you afresh as instruments of God's mercy receive supernatural wisdom and unction as you attend to patients in the name of Jesus Christ under your watch the patients will not die in the name of Jesus we pray for those who are connecting right now from various hospitals clinics various places of help maybe rehabilitation centers in the name of Jesus we decree and declare may the life and the power of Jesus surge through the television and touch them right now in the name of Jesus and not only are you a bona fide recipient of longevity, I release you as an agent to transmit the same. That beginning from tonight, whosoever you declare upon, as far as longevity is concerned, may heaven back it up. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Let me make reference to the first key that I gave. I'm about to make the altar call. That you must submit to Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. You came here to church tonight. And whilst you heard me speak about longevity. The spirit of God began to convict you. That you may be faithful in all others. But truly as it is you have not submitted to Jesus. Please listen. Let's minimize movement so that we can allow those who are coming to come. There will always be someone to be saved. Always be someone to make it right with Jesus. And you are here tonight and saying, Apostle, if you give me a chance, I would like to make it right with Jesus. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. And others are saying, I want to rededicate my life. I cannot say for sure and for certain that my relationship with Jesus is intact. Wherever you are, I want to count one to five very boldly. Please leave your seat. For those who are coming, please allow them come. Leave your seat and come. Stand right here. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Celebrate them as they come. In the name of Jesus. All the overflows, the balcony, you are seated here. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Make sure you don't sit back. God bless you. Koinonia, are you encouraging them? Come. Come, come, come to Jesus. God bless you. He can give you a new beginning. You can start afresh with him. And don't say, Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. I'm afraid. Perhaps there's uh, someone who knows me. Please make your way. You can make it right with Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
If you're joining them, join us very quickly. I'm about to lead God's people to pray. Thank you very much for the courage. May I request that you lift your right hand if you can, high above your head, and please say this as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare from tonight that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace, forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, thank you for these ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing this many. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven. And in Jesus' name, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I empower you by the word of God and by the ministry of the Spirit that you begin to walk in newness of life from tonight until forever. In Jesus' matchless name. Congratulations. May I request that you follow our counselors. Please, all of you in front, let's appreciate them as they go. Just a word with the counselors very quickly and you will be back to your seat. Let's encourage them. God bless you. Celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Right, like I announced, let me announce one more time. Next week is our miracle service for the month of November. And that happens to be the final miracle service for this year. Please invite everybody. It's going to be an awesome time. Five on the dot, we're here. And those of you who are online, make sure that you, you um, get the link across to everyone who needs to be connected. We're going to take the time to pray and trust God to bring miracles, healing, signs, wonders, breakthroughs over lives as he has anointed us to. Have you been blessed tonight? May the Lord increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please stand. I declare that your weak beginning is blessed. In the name of Jesus. You go from glory to glory. You go from grace to grace. The hand of God is strong upon you. You are supernaturally protected. No evil shall hurt you. And I declare as God has spoken tonight, you shall not die. But you will live to fulfill and declare the works of the Lord. You go forth with joy and you are led forth with peace. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Together, let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the fear. The resurrected King has resurrected me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King has resurrected me. Resurrected, resurrected, resurrected.